Well, hey everybody, this is Robert, and today I wanna to do an educational video, and the topic will be blood and tissue flagellates. And this includes uh, the genus Trypanosoma and Leishmania. So let's go ahead and take a look. First, I wanna talk about Trypanosoma brucei. Uh, this is the causative agent of African sleeping sickness, also known as African trypanosomiasis. Now, there's two subspecies of this parasite. Uh, it's Trypanosoma brucei rhod rhodesiense. This is the cause of East African sleeping sickness, a more rapid, acute, fatal type of um, infection. And there's Trypanosoma brucei gambiense. This causes West African sleeping sickness. And as you can venture from the titles, um, they're differentiated a lot on geography. You know, one is Rhode Rhodesiense is found in Eastern and Southeastern Africa, while Gambiense is found more in Central Africa and a little bit in Western Africa. And of course, there's some overlap between the two, so that's not a hard and fast rule, uh, but for the most part, that's how it's divided geographically. And this is an example of the life cycle of the parasite. And on the, the part of the chart that's closest to my picture is its life cycle within the human. And on the left-hand side is the life cycle within the vector, the CC fly. And the CC fly is the vector. And both types of sleeping sickness are caused by the bite of the CC fly. And this is a bite that is from what I've read, it's never happened to me, but very painful, very aggressive, very aggressive insect. And these vicious little bugs depend on blood meals for its nutrients. And it gets its blood from mammals, including humans. And a lot of different um, animals in Africa can become infected with a CC fly, um, the parasite through the CC fly. When it's taken a blood meal, the fly injects the parasite into the skin. From there, it uh, is carried to the lymphatic system and eventually to the bloodstream. It goes through quite a few stages in the body and eventually ends up in the spinal fluid if it's left untreated. And here's a couple of photographs of CC fly bites, so they're incredibly noticeable. Um, and like I said, the fly is very aggressive. It's a very painful bite, so it's kind of hard to miss. Uh, the symptoms. East African sleeping sickness, like I already mentioned, this is the more uh, acute, the more fulminant type of infection. The development of a chancre at the bite site is followed by uh, fever and fatigue and muscle aches and joints and uh, swollen lymph nodes, uh, something called winter bottom sign, which we'll talk about in a moment. These are all very characteristic of sleeping sickness um, caused by Trypanosoma brucei rhodesiense. Um, after the CNS invasion, neurological manifestations may occur, followed by death if it's untreated. A very rapid, fulminant disease, um, an individual can die within a month, a very acute infection, infection. West African sleeping sickness is a little bit slower. Um, many of the same types of symptoms, but they just take a little bit longer to appear. Uh, you may see progressive confusion, personality changes, daytime sleepiness with nighttime sleep disturbances. Uh, death will happen after several years if it's left untreated. And then I was talking about winter bottom sign. It's a classic characteristic of uh, sleeping sickness. And this is a swelling of the lymph nodes along the back of the neck. In the posterior cervical chain of lymph nodes, uh, the trypanosomes travel in the lymphatic fluid and cause inflammation. And you can see the, see the bumps and the swelling. Um, the tr trypanosome or the trypanosome is here in the photograph and found in a blood smear. And it's a slender organism with a central nucleus. It's flagellated. Well, there's the nucleus there. It's flagellated. Then you can see the undulating membrane along the body. And looking at 
this stage of the parasite, say in a blood smear, um, you can't differentiate the two species. They are identical. Laboratory diagnosis is one way is demonstrating the trypanosomes um, in an examination of the Shanker fluid in very, very early disease. Um, you can also find the uh, trypomastigotes and lymph node aspirates in the blood, of course, thick and thin smears, bone marrow, and then in the very late stages of the infection, uh, the CSF. Um, you can see an elevated IgM in serum and CSF. Is that diagnostic? Um, not quite sure how uh, good of a test that is for diagnosing um, African sleeping sickness. And antibody detection has sensitivity and specificity that are too variable for clinical decisions. And that is what the CDC is telling us. Okay, so that was African trypanosomiasis. There's another trypanosome, and it's called Trypanosoma cruzi. And this is the parasite, the agent that causes Chagas disease, or American trypanosomiasis. And people can become infected in various ways. Uh, the insect vector is a very common way to get Chagas disease. And that's called, uh, the tri it's the triatomin bugs. It's a, it's a group of bugs. And uh, the nickname that most people are familiar with are the kissing bugs. Um, after they bite and ingest blood, they defecate on the person. And then the person can become infected with the parasite, T. cruzi, um, that's found in the bug feces uh, when it can enter the body through mucous membranes or breaks in the skin. So, for example, somebody that's sleeping, uh, the kissing bug comes up in the middle of the night, defecates near the eye, the person rubs it, the parasite gets in there, and hence they are infected. That's one way. It can be rubbing into a wound on the arm or whatever. You get the point. And here's a picture of a um, kissing bug on the far left-hand side. On the middle slide, you can see that it's defecating, and then it goes on its way. And uh, then what would happen is if the individual scratches it and it breaks the skin, you become infected with uh, Trypanosoma cruzi. Um, you can also become infected with congenital transmission, right? Because this, this parasite can cross the placenta, so it, it can go from the pregnant woman to her baby. Um, the, now, these aren't very common, just keep that in mind. But blood transfusion, organ transplants, consumption of uncooked food contaminated with feces from infected bugs. And we see this... Um, Often enough in South America where um, people become infected after eating ACI berries. I hope I said that right. Um, the bugs are up there and it gets all squashed up and they make juice or do whatever with it. And the, the feces is in there and it gets ingested. And accidental laboratory exposure, which is um, quite rare also. Okay, then the parasite invades the macrophages at or near the site of entry. And here they transform, multiply, and rupture from the cells four to five days later and enter the bloodstream and tissue spaces. Now the pathology of Chagas disease, there's an acute stage and a chronic stage, and both can be symptom-free or life-threatening. The initial infection with Chagas is typically asymptomatic, Acute disease may manifest symptoms after a couple of weeks. Some things that you may see is a shagoma, that's a reddening of the skin, or edema around the eye, like you can see in this picture. That's called Romana sign. That may be seen also, and this is right, um, pretty much uncommon, but it has been seen. There's plenty of pictures of it. So, yeah, it's definitely a, a symptom. Um, Fever, malaise, and large liver and, and spleen are part of the acute syndrome. Now, the big thing with um, Chagas disease is it's uh, pathology that develops within the heart. 10% of people develop acute myocarditis with congestive heart failure. And, of course, the acute disease, of course, could be fatal. Um, 
Now, if it does go on to chronic disease after a latent period, which could be years, it could be quite a few years, um, about 20 to 40 percent of people develop chronic disease. And the most serious consequence is cardiomyopathy. And in certain areas of the world, particularly some parts of South America, um, Chagas is the leading cause of death in men less than 45 years of age from the cardiac involvement. Um, you can also see uh, megacolon, mega esophagus, uh, which cause, causes uh, disruption with peristalsis, where exactly as the um, syndromes mentioned, it's uh, enlarged, very enlarged colon, very enlarged uh, esophagus. And I think I have a picture of a megacolon. So yeah, that's <laughs> pretty huge. So yeah, it's something you don't want to see. Uh, diagnosis, you can see the mastigotes. That's one of the stages in the tissue. This is seen in the heart and postmortem. Or you can find it in tissue scrapings from the Shigoma lesion. Uh, and what you see here are the Leishman Donovan bodies. The parasite forms a mastigotes characterized by a single nucleus and kinetoplast. The amastigotes of T. cruzi are morphologically indistinguishable from those of Leishmania species, something we're going to be looking at in a few moments. Now, more commonly, um, you can diagnose T. Cru T. cruzi through its trypomastigotes, and this is the stage that's found in the blood of the infected person. Uh, it's very easy to see in the acute infection, chronic infection, not so much. It's there's similarities to this to the agent that caused the parasite that causes uh, African sleeping sickness, but this is very um, got a very distinguished uh, C shape to it, uh, very characteristic, a large subterminal prominent kinetoplast. You can see that here, a centrally located nucleus, the undulating membrane right here, and of course the the flagella that runs all the way down the end, uh, past the anterior end of the body. So it's very characteristic. It's very, very hard to miss. You can also diagnose it. Now, I, I don't know how often this is done, but xenodiagnosis is something that I learned about years ago. And this is where a bug that was um, bred in a laboratory will feed on the infected person. Then you would later examine the feces of the bug for the parasite and see if that's how they picked it up. Uh, there's serolo serological tests and, of course, PCR. There's basically PCR for just about everything now. Thank goodness. And this is just a quick review of Chagas disease. Endemic in Mexico, Central America, and South America, with up to 11 million people infected at any one time. Um, there is Chagas disease in certain areas of the United States, South Texas, Louisiana. So it, it is seen in some parts of the southern United States. Uh, the local lesion, Chagoma, edema, uh, acute phase, if you're symptomatic, fever, anorexia, uh, enlarged lymph nodes, uh, enlarged uh, liver and spleen, myocarditis, uh, chronic stage, cardiomyopathy, mega esophagus, mega colon, weight loss can be fatal. And let me go ahead and close out the blood and tissue flagellates with leishmania. And this is a parasitic disease that is found in parts of the tropics, subtropics, and southern Europe. And it's transmitted by this little guy over here. It's a sandfly from the phlebotomist species. Uh, of course, more rarely, it can be transmitted via transfusion and transplants. Now, the most common forms are cutaneous leishmaniasis, which causes skin sores and a lot of very, um, if you have mucocutaneous infection, it can cause very destructive uh, things to happen like on the face or the ears and stuff like that. And visceral leishmaniasis, which is the more serious of the types and this affects a variety of different organs um, usually the spleen liver and the bone marrow and as i said cutaneous leishmaniasis is the most common form 
and causes skin lesions, mainly ulcers, on exposed parts of the body, leaving lifelong scars and serious disability. About 95% of cutaneous leishmaniasis occur in the Americas, the Mediterranean Basin, the Middle East, and Central Asia. Over two-thirds of new cases occur in six countries, Afghanistan, Algeria, Brazil, Colombia, Iran, and Syria. There's an estimated 0.6 million to 1 million new cases occurring annually across the globe. Uh, mucocutaneous leishmaniasis, this leads to partial or total destruction of the mucous membranes of the nose, mouth, throat. Uh, nine out of ten cases occur in Bolivia, Brazil, Ethiopia, and Peru. And uh, these are very, very destructive. And we'll see if I got a picture of a case of that in a moment. Okay, here's cutaneous leishmaniasis. Uh, leishmaniasis. Leishman Lismania tropica will present with disfiguring sores and lesions of the skin at the site where they were bitten by the sandfly. A mastigotes, remember a mastigotes from Trypanosoma cruzi? Well, this parasite also produces them. Uh, and th remember, they're indistinguishable too, um, microscopically. The mastigotes localize intracellularly in the skin macrophage. It's self healing. Uh, Leishmania brasiliensis causes mucocutaneous infections, so the patient presents with disfiguring damage to the mucous membranes of the nose and the mouth. And there's a, that's what a cutaneous leishmaniasis wound would look like. And that's a severe, severe case of uh, mucocutaneous leishmaniasis. Then there's visceral leishmaniasis, and this is caused by Leishmania donovanae. And vis visceral leishmaniasis is also known as calaazar, and that's a name that was given for, you can see the, the graying of the bodies and stuff like that of patients that had it, and also been called dumb dumb fever. And if it's left untreated, it's fatal in at least 95% of cases. It's characterized by irregular bouts of fever, weight loss, an enlargement of the spleen, liver, and anemia. It multiplies within the macrophages of the liver and spleen, and those are the Leishman Donovan, Do Leishman Donovan bodies, or the LD bodies. And here's a couple of them with, the, you know, the uh, uh, enlarged organs, so you can they have the big bellies. And then there's also something called post calaazar dermal leishmaniasis. And it says in India and occasionally in East Africa, a cutaneous form of leishmaniasis can occur about two years after treatment and recovery from visceral leishmaniasis or incomplete treatment. And this appears as hypopigmented patches or may develop as nodules and resemble those of uh, leprosy, fungal infections, and other skin disorders. Uh, occasionally, there's an ulceration of the lips and tongue. Amastigos are present in the papules and nodules of these lesions. The diagnosis, um, species dependent, leishmania. In, in, I list three different species here because of the three different uh, forms of disease, but there's a number of other um, species of leishmania. Leishmania tropica, diagnose it finding amastigotes in the macrophages of the skin lesions. Uh, Leishmania brasiliensis, amastigotes at the periphery of the lesion. And Leishmania donovanae, amastigotes in the early skin lesion. The different species are morphologically indistinguishable, but they can be differentiated by isoenzyme analysis, molecular methods, or monoclonal antibodies. LD bodies can later be seen in the RE system. And of course, there's different uh, skin tests, there's serologies, and of course, PCR. Okay, I hope you uh, enjoyed that. Hope you got something out of it. It was a little quick look at the blood and tissue flagellates. And I encourage you to subscribe to the, to the channel, uh, like the video, share it with your friends, uh, share it with them. Uh, anybody that's going through a medical technology program or a parasitology program, uh, undergrad, grad, and uh, maybe it will help them out a little bit. And uh, thanks a lot. 
I'll see you next time.